On this episode of Motorhead Sweethearts, we introduce our new series with the star of our show, Tony G. Tony has been my neighbor, automotive mentor, and awesome friend for all my life. And I'm happy to share his automotive backstory and amazing legacy he's building. Watch it all here on Tinkering with Tony. Tony G, a.k.a. Anthony Gluzinski. Everybody knows me as Tony G, because it's a lot simpler to say Tony G than it says Anthony Gluzinski. I started with automobiles when I was way back this high. I had a field car when I was seven years old. And people don't know what field car is. It's a car that I owned that I drove in the fields. It was a 1953 Plymouth Savoy. I can still remember that brown four-door. It was my tank. We used to go knock trees down with it. It was a lot of fun. At seven years old, having a car or stick was the privilege back then. And then as I got older, and I started working in my father's collision shop. I used to get paid a whole whopping five dollars to sand and tape half of a car. And I thought that was big money back then. That's back in the early 60s. So that's a long time ago. That's how I started automobile. But I did not like collision work. I liked taking the motors apart, putting them together. So that's what I started doing at my father's garage. Here's a picture of me when I was 16 in school. <laughs> Look at the hairdo, huh? Is that cool or what, yeah. man? Nam, probably. I don't think for the country, you know. I was a devoted country person, man. I believe that. You want to see my Vietnam pictures? This is me at a bunker. We had perimeter guard. You had to be on that bunker for a month. Uh, the mess station was maybe a couple hundred yards away, so you only had to go one person at a time to eat, because there always had to be four people at the bunker. I was bunker sergeant, that's why I kind of stood around. Here's another one with me with an M16. And this is a picture of the bunker. This is what they look like when they get hit with rounds. You see all the bags are blown apart. That shrapnel does that. So if you're standing back there, you're not gonna be standing there for long. That tears you up real bad. This is what I flew in in them. It was a Cessna Bird Dog 01 tail flopper. We used to do forward reconnaissance. This is me in front of the main barracks that we lived in while I was there. Man, look how nice and thin down I am there, huh? <laughs> well, I was a handsome dude. There's another picture in front of the motor pool. I was a motor pool sergeant, but I ended up being an observer in a plane because they needed observers. He used to have a Boss 429 Mustang. I don't know if anybody ever heard of those cars. When I came out of Nam in 71, I bought a Boss 429. Kept that for three years. My first wife says, why is it sitting in the garage? I said, well, it's not hurting nobody. Why can't it sit in the garage? And she said, why don't you move it so we can make some money? So, like a yeah, yeah. I, uh, Sold it for twice for what I paid for it, and I figured, man, I made a killing twice. I paid thirty-six ninety for it when I was in the service, and I sold it for seventy-eight hundred bucks. And I thought, man, I am rich. Back then, okay. that's rich. Come to find out, the car is worth about two hundred fifty thousand right now. I would have kept it. 
I would retire with, with honors. <laughs> I like the look on your face, Jenny. Yeah, <laughs> that car is worth two hundred fifty thousand dollars right now. Yeah. That's a picture of it. I carry it in my wallet to remind me how crazy I was to sell it. I had, uh, in my lifetime, I have to say, anywhere from 35 to 40 cars I've owned. You name it, I had one. And when I was growing up, I had a 57 Ford convertible. Dave kind of got shocked that I said it was a convertible. Back then, that was, uh, I was a rich guy because I had a convertible. Those convertibles were considered luxury cars. But it was a Ford with a 312 V8, two fours, and a Paxton supercharger. But it was a three speed on a tree. Didn't cut it for this old guy. So my father's friend owned a junkyard. In the evening, we would, me and a couple of my buddies would go over there and we acquired a four speed out of a car that was in their junkyard. We brought it home, put it in my, my wagon, my convertible. And we had fun with the four speed. It was a lot of fun. This one's the old, one of the oldest. If you look, I can't see what I got there. It's a 58 Ford. I bought that in on Fort Bragg, North Carolina, in Fayetteville, North Carolina. I paid $150 for that. It was a six cylinder. It was a steel, ran like a top. Now this is back in the early 60s. I want to say 1961, 62. That's my 57 Ford convertible, and that's my brother's 60 Chevy sitting right next to it. Both of them didn't have motors in them because uh, we kind of broke them. So they parked. <laughs> here's, a, here's a ranch wagon, two-door Ford, 57 Ford wagon I owned. Like I said, I had a lot of cars. Did you break a lot of cars? I broke a lot of cars. <laughs> 68 and my 58. I bought a 68 convertible to drive. The Mustang was in the garage. My wife thought I was nuts because I had all them cars sitting in the driveway and the nice cars in the garage. Here I am drag racing my 68 because they wouldn't let me race my Mustang because they had no class for it. So I used to take my convertible and race it. Again, here's another picture of the 57 Ford. If you look, there's my 57, there's my brother's 60, and that's my mom's 57. That is where they're all running it for a change. It's a rare picture because they all happen to be running. <laughs> Usually they don't all run at the same time. I had a motorhome. I got so that David wishes he had one of these. Oh, wow. Yeah, look, yeah. At that. look at that bad boy. Yeah, look at You see the headlight covers? Yeah. <laughs> Right. That's that's my my grand, my daughters and my sons. Oh my we used to go on vacation. They used to sit up there and count punch bugs. And, and hit, hit each, each other. other. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so all the way down on a trip, they would be on top of the bunk, looking out that window, watching all the punch bugs. <laughs> so they had several pickup trucks. That was the big thing in the early '80s and '90s was pickup trucks. There's a red pickup truck I had. I love that. That's a, that was an 85. I bought it from, that used to be our work truck at South Union Chrysler Plymouth. Get out. Really? And I got it dirt cheap. <laughs> then I sold that and bought this one. This was an 86. So it was one year difference, but this was a three quarter ton from Alaska. This truck came from Alaska. That's me beating the snot out of it. See, because I, I have the tendency to beat up everything. And then I had another couple trucks. Here's my here's my Amethyst Purple Baby. That's a 99. Oh, it was a beautiful truck. I don't know if you can see it here. You can see it on, underneath the 4x4, if you look close, G Bandit. And there's a little guy standing there with a hat and just feet. A 55 Chevy, yeah, I'm not a Chevy man, but I had a 55 Chevy, it was called Wild Thing. Primered black, I had Wild Thing on the fenders. It was pretty cool. And that had a 301 with two fours on it. But the Chevy never turned me on as much as the Fords do, so that's why I'm a Ford man, 100%, all the way. That's all I'm ever gonna do is drive Fords until I can't drive no more. <laughs> 
Another oldie that I had. Oh, tell the story about that one. This one here I bought when I was working at Chrysler's store. This one I paid $275 for it because it was going to go to a demo. The guy bought it to wreck it, and I couldn't let it go to wreck. It had written all over it, hit me. Uh, hit here, had targets painted on. They painted over the chrome and everything. I had to clean all that up. But it came out nice. The car was the car was a sweet car. This is my one of my first race cars. Oh yeah. The it's war wagon. The war wagon. It was a 66 <laughs> Comet. I bought it off a friend of mine's mother. I think it was another couple hundred dollar car. Whatever the scrap was for the time. Miss my wife checking up on me. Making sure you're behaving. Yeah. My second war wagon, this is war wagon two, it's a 66 Fairlane. I got the body from my wife, or my brother and his wife. They bought a house and the car was in the garage that was there and then people let them have it. So there was no title to it, but I was racing it so I could care less. And I did own a van for seven years, a van. If you look closely, the red one and white one way back on the one side with all the fancy looking half moons going down the side, that was the first attempt at painting custom. <laughs> no airbrush art? No airbrush. This no was all, woman. take a piece, piece of cardboard, cut them half moon and go like this and go with the air gun. All the way down. I'm at present, Fairlane. <laughs> this is my baby. One of two, besides my wife. <laughs> Don't forget Stan. Yeah, Stan is right there. <laughs> <laughs> This one. Oh. Holding there. This is a trophy for our model club. We uh, we took first place in a national event with our club for participation. Oh, I have a ton of model cars. <laughs> a ton of model cars. Seventy-two in September. I'm still farting around with cars. As you can see, and we're gonna have later. I'm putting together a '65 Falcon I bought. Uh, gonna make that into a race car because right now I'm racing my '69 Ford Fairlane, which is a cream puff. But it, it runs pretty good. I built that myself.
I'm gonna keep doing this as long as my my life lets me do it uh, until I can't move no more. I'd probably be doing this. Oh yeah. I haven't seen one of them in years. <laughs> I don't know if anybody wants to see my birthday pictures. Look at this. This was the big 5-0. <laughs> you turned into a moose? I turned into a moose. <laughs> Sit down. Turn around. 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 Turn